we do? Well, we like they have to be like the height and the width have to be the same in large. Excellent. So it has to be enlarged. The same ratio. <gasps> Perfect. Enlarged or reduced by the same ratio or the same scale factor. I had one in oh here. Oh my. I had a pen in here. Wait, why do I have two of these? Because so remember, I moved put one in, in here. And I have to put it in my truck after I'm stoned. I wasn't going to hand it over. I don't get up there because uh, I didn't know he's on here. Or so. Because I had one. I will not even right print now. off four copies. Just print off three. Hey. He's not ever going to show up. Hey. I think we both know that. I literally saw him in the parking lot. Okay. No, no, he's here. Wait, so can I just doesn't come back? Period of seven and see how he's doing that. Uh, probably. Well, it's probably gonna be a power school soon. Oh, yeah, no way. Yeah, I'm not sure anyway. Okay, um, so yeah, it has to be enlarged or reduced by the same scale factor. So, question two. Which of these right cones is similar to a right angle cone uh, that is 20 centimeters high and it has a diameter of 10 centimeters? So, which one is similar to that? And how do you know? A is two times smaller. Okay. So two times smaller, yeah. So we we divided the height in two and the diameter in two. So this one is similar, right? We just divided by two of the scale factor, right? Okay, what about a right cone fifteen centimeters high? And 7.5 centimeters in diameter. We don't have this on ours. I know. Oh. So going from 20 to 15, that is three quarters, right? 75%. And then going from 10 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters is also three quarters, right? So is this one similar? Yeah. Yeah, sure is. And what about C? No. No? Why? All oh, diameter should be, be 15. Oh yeah, it's good, because it's, it's five centimeters bigger than uh, diameter, the diameter is five centimeters bigger, and the... Uh, diameter is ten centimeters, right? Yeah, and the diameter on that one is fifteen, because that's only radius. Oh, okay, yeah, good eye, so good it's, eye. It's good. Um, so to get from twenty to thirty, we multiply by one point five? Yeah. And we multiply our diameter by 1.5, so that gives us 15 centimeters, and the radius is half of the diameter, which is 7.5 centimeters. So these are all similar, okay? Good. Good eye. Uh, okay, so a 1 to 25 scale model of a trailer is 0 0.4 feet tall, and 0 0.3 feet wide. And 1.5 feet long. I'm getting better. I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm getting better at 3D objects. Okay? And it is 1.5 feet long. What are the dimensions of the actual trailer? Okay? Uh, it's 10, or it's, uh, 10 feet tall and it's... And how did you? 7.5 feet. How did you get that, Cody? As times 0 0.4 times by 25. Yeah, you multiply it by 25, right? Because it's going to get 25 times bigger. So 0 0.4 times 25. So you said it was 10. Yeah, and then the length is 37.5 feet. Uh, like, oh, this one. Yeah. Times 25. Okay. And then the uh, width is 7.5. No, that one was not better. But, anyways. So, how long was it, Cody? Uh, 37.5 feet. And what is the width? Oh, the width is 7.5 feet. Excellent. Good. Good. Feeling alright with scale factors and stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Sweet. So, let's get into today's topic. So, this is scale factors and 3D objects. So yesterday we looked at scale factors with 2D objects. 
Last week we looked at scale factors um, like for lengths, right? So now we're getting into 3D objects. Okay, so reviewing surface area and volume of 3D shapes. Okay, so let's write these down. So surface area for a rectangular prism is equal to 2 multiplied by length times width, right? We have a bottom and a top, so length times width. Plus, or multiplied by length times height, multiplied by the width times height. Okay, volume for a rectangular prism is simply length times width times height. Okay, for a right pyramid, surface area is equal to length squared plus 4. So length squared, that's going to be the surface area of the base, plus 4 of the triangles, which is the length times the side divided by 2. And this is S right here. Okay, uh, we can simplify that to L squared plus uh, 4 divided by 2 is just going to be 2. So 2 length times the side. Okay, so that is surface area. Volume is 1 over 3 length times the height. Okay, the height of the pyramid from the inside, not the length of that side. Okay? So right triangular prism. So we have two triangles and then three rectangles, right? Front and back and then our three triangles. So for the two triangles, it is two multiplied by base times height divided by two plus length multiplied by A plus B plus C. Okay, we can simplify that. 2 multiplied by base over height divided by 2 just gives me base times height plus length times A plus B plus C. Volume for a right triangular prism is equal to 1 over 2 base times height times the length. Okay. For a right cone, we continue. Um, so we have a circle at the bottom and then the cone. So the surface area, pi r squared is for the circle at the bottom, plus the conic section, plus pi times the radius times the side length. Okay, volume for a right cone is one over three, pi r squared, H. Go here, these up. You need these. Okay, motoring along, we have two more. Okay, so for a right cylinder, we have two circles and like the cylinder section. So surface area gives 2 pi r squared for our two circles, and then the conic section is 2 pi r h. Volume for a right cylinder is pi r squared h. Okay, last one is our sphere. The surface area for a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Volume for a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. All right, so here are some formulas. And again, you guys are not expected to like memorize any of these. Yes. Okay, uh, you just need to know how to use these formulas for the stuff what we're doing today. Okay, so in a linear model, this is what we looked at last week, okay? If we are comparing one dimension to another dimension, what determined the scale factor? Or what is, let's start with what is the scale factor? 
It's an enlargement or reduction of uh, object? Yes, absolutely. And to calculate scale factor, which is K, expectations over reality, right? So diagram over actual. Okay, and to calculate the measurement, so measurement, the new measurement. is equal to the measurement of the original multiplied by that scale factor, right? That's what we did. That should be fine, right? Okay, so that is in a linear model. Now, if we are in an area model, how did we calculate scale factor? It looks similar to this, but areas in two dimensions, right? Left and right and up and down. So, what was my formula for area and scale factor? Wait, sorry, what, what did you say? What is the formula for area if we know the scale factor. Okay, so area is what we had. So area, the new area, is equal to the area of the original multiplied by the scale factor squared, right? Remember that? It was scale factor squared for area. Okay, so if it's linear, so one dimension, just the measurement. So it'll be measurement new is equal to measurement of the old or the original multiplied by scale factor to the one, right? It's in one dimension. Now we're getting into area. Area is in two dimensions. To define the area of the new shape, you multiply the original area by k squared, right? Because that is in two dimensions. Now, what do you think the relationship will be for surface area? I know we just talked about it. What are we going to do to our scale factor? What did we do to our scale factor? Was it to the degree of 1? Was it to the degree of 2? Was it to the degree of a million? Sorry? For surface area, what did you write on the line above where we are right now? What did we do to our K for surface area? Cubed. Careful. For surface area, it is in two dimensions. Uh, squared. Squared, okay? So we did K squared. Now, for volume, which has three dimensions, what do you think we're going to do to our scale factor, Brody? K cubed. K cubed? Is that what you said? Yeah, K cubed. Okay, volume, three dimensions. Length, depth, and a width, right? Okay, so we're going to do k cubed when we are uh, doing calculations involving volume. Okay, so if it is linear, if you're just doing a side length, it's k to the 1. If you're doing surface area, it is k to the 2. And if you're doing volume, it's k to the 3. Okay? Okay, so summary. If the units are linear, so if it's just centimeters to the one, meters to the one, feet to the one, you're just going to multiply by the scale factor. Okay, so diagram diagram is going to equal the original multiplied by the scale factor to the one. If the units are squared, we multiply by the scale factor what? To the one, to the two, to the three. Right, so. 
So for surface area, we're talking about, right? Just to the two. To the two, yep, exactly. Okay, so we have A new is equal to A original multiplied by K squared. If the units are cubed, what do you think we're going to do? Cube it? Yep, exactly. The scale factor, right? Yeah. Yeah. So multiply by the scale cubed. So that's what we get. We get volume new is equal to volume of the original multiplied by k to the 3. Okay, so linear, k to the 1. If it's squared, k to the 2. If it's volume, k to the 3. Okay? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, squared. Oh, uh, full of them. All right, you guys ready to apply this? Sure. Great. So a cylinder has a surface area of 48 square centimeters. If the cylinder is doubled in size, what will be the surface area of the new cylinder? Okay, so this one. Wow, this is a really stupid question. What? Uh, no, because, so, if it is linear, if it's in one dimension, you would just multiply by that, you would double it, right? Yeah. But because we're talking about surface area here, we need to square our scale factor. So because 48 squared and then double it. No, careful, okay? So what is your formula for area at the top of your page? Yeah, so area new is equal to the area of the original multiplied by k squared. Okay? So, this is my original, and it is doubled in size. So my scale factor is going to be 2. So area new is going to be 48 centimeters squared multiplied by 2 squared. And we get a new area of 192 centimeters squared. So, not a dumb question. If it was just a rectangle, it would be. Stupid rectangles. Yeah. Two dimensional shapes. Do you guys have a favorite shape? Circle. Uh, Circle. No, I'm probably like doing donuts. Probably a square. A square? So that would be the easiest thing. I think it's circle. Circles are sweet. Yeah. No vertices, right? So what's your favorite? Uh, shape? Uh, yeah, triangles are pretty sweet. They're really strong, right? They're using construction a lot. Squares. Squares are kind of boring, right? Mm. Circles are good. Yeah, without a circle, you wouldn't be able to get to work. No. We'd be driving around in square wheel square. cars. Yeah. Or you just walk. Yeah. Sometimes that's like what it feels like you're driving on that hyena road, like that bumpy one. Yeah. Feels like you're driving you on square wheels. Yeah. Yeah, that one's true. They, they, they've uh, been filling it in recently. Yeah, yesterday on the way to Fisher View, yeah, yeah. they were working. Yeah. Yeah, Big Brandon got his license. You got yours? Oh, oh, oh. Brandon, let's let's get a round of applause for Brandon. Let's go, out of boy. Congratulations. Yeah, he didn't even drive to school. I couldn't. <laughs> That's exciting. That's what? exciting. This is not your, true at all. Your sister was complaining that she had to leave physics early to drive you. Yeah. She wasn't complaining. She was probably excited. Well, it's insured, but it's not under my name. Oh, so my parents don't want to drive me. Okay, good, good. So again, so surface area. Guys, surface area is k squared. Yes. Yeah. Volume is what? K cubed. K cubed. Good. Good. Okay. Speaking of volume, 
A extra large Kleenex box has a volume of 3600 centimeters cubed. A smaller box has a volume of 56.25 centimeters cubed. What is the scale factor relating the smaller to the larger box? Okay? So, what's our V new? What is our new volume? So remember, our new volume is 56.25 centimeters cubed. Good. So remember volumes uh, and scale factors. So volume new is equal to volume original times the scale factor cubed. Okay. As Logan mentioned, our new volume is 56.25 centimeters cubed. Our original volume is 3600 centimeters cubed multiplied by k cubed. What are we looking for in this question? Um, we're looking for the scale factor. Yeah, we're looking for k, right? So we would try and get uh, k cubed by itself and divide by 36 centimeters cubed. Okay. Okay. So, um, if if you guys want, you can calculate yours. I'm a one-step calculator guy, so I'm just gonna leave this. Jersey City or something. Is K by itself? How do we get k cubed by Cube itself? Cubed. Yes! Wonderful! Good. So we'll cube root both sides. So that cancels. Now we're just left with k. And if you put this into your calculator, you should get a k of 0 0.25, which as a fraction is 1 over 4, right? So what is the scale factor relating the smaller to the larger box? Well, the smaller box is one quarter the size of the larger box. Mm -hmm. Or the scale factor is one over four, or 0 0.25. Okay? Motor in. Okay, so this one, about how much more air is inside a basketball as compared to a tennis ball? about how much more air. So what are we looking for? The volume. The volume. So Absolutely. So obviously a basketball. So the new one is a tennis ball. So volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Okay, we know our radius in both cases, so we'll just substitute that into that radius, right? So volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi 4.7 cubed. And we got a volume there equal to 434.89 centimeters cubed. We'll do the exact same thing for the tennis ball. I'll use a different color. Volume 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Volume is equal to 150.53 centimeters cubed. Okay, so what? So we know the volume of the basketball, we know the volume of the tennis ball. So what? What is the question asking us? Um, how much air is inside of each one? Yeah, so how much more air is in the basketball, right? It's about like almost 300 centimeters more. Yeah, but let's, we want to do multiplication, right? How many times more, right? How many times more? So how do we calculate that? Um, divide 434. Excellent. We want to divide 
uh, the volume of the basketball by the volume of the tennis ball, okay? So we got 439, sorry, 434. 0.89 centimeters cubed divided by 150.53 centimeters cubed is equal to 2.89. 2.89 what? Why do we care? What does this mean? That's the difference. Hey, sir, can I still call you for a quick sec? No. Oh, I just need to talk to him about something. He's learning math. Cody. Cody, go. All right. So we're going to the pyramids. We're going to Egypt. So jump in your way back machine. And we're going to Egypt. Yeah. Woo! I heard it's actually very beautiful. Beautiful? Yeah, it's not like just those. It actually has like cities. Like, like houses. Yeah. Stuff. Like people assume it's just a whole bunch of pyramids. But. For the longest time, I didn't know it's actually really good. And apparently these pyramids are starting to get beat up a lot. Mm -hmm. Just because they're weathering, right? Sun, water, erosion, right? This is a thing. Okay, anyways. So the Great Pyramid of Giza, is it, this is in Egypt. So we are in Egypt now. I hope you brought your sunscreen. This was built on a square base with the dimensions shown below, okay? An artist who works with plate glass wants to build a replica of the pyramid for an installation at an art gallery. Okay, this is a real life application. Okay, the artist is restricted by the floor dimensions, uh, which are four or sorry, which are six by six meters. So trying to shrink it down. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then we want there to do dimensions. So we want our dimensions to be six by six meters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a ceiling height of 3.5 meters. What the? So that's just like, those are the dimensions of our new pyramid that we yeah. want to build. Okay? I wasn't worried about that. I just heard some like, kids scream bloody murder and I was like, there's something. <laughs> um, actually, now that I'm looking at this, um, I solved this incorrectly because I did not read this question properly. No, we'll, we'll still answer it. That's okay. <laughs> um, but it's what it's asking. So the, the room. The house is six by, or yeah, the, the room is six meters by six meters, right? Um, but the glass sculpture must have room for one meter walkway around its base, right? So if we want a one meter walkway, if there's one meter here and one meter here, what is the size of my pyramid replica going to be? Four meters. Four meters. Okay? Good. Good. That's important. Okay, so we know the base of our replica needs to be four meters, right? That's a damn good square I just drew. This one? Oh, you're, you're talking about your own. My, my square right Okay, so the base of the original is 230.4 meters divided by what we want it to be is 4 meters and that is equal to what? Fifty-seven point six. Okay? So it is getting 57.6 times smaller, right? So that is for the base. Now let's do the same thing, but for the height. Okay, so our height, as per the question, uh, the ceiling height is 3.5 meters, okay? And the height in this thing is 146.6. Okay, that's my height. This is my length. Okay. So, 146.6 meters 
divided by the size of our uh, thing that we're building is 3.5 meters, and we get uh, 41.9 as a scale factor. Okay, so what is getting reduced more, the base or the height? Uh, because, okay, think of it this way. If we're going from our replica to the actual height, yeah. it's getting 41.9 times bigger. Right? Yeah, but that one's getting 57.6 times bigger. Exactly. And, it's getting, and it's getting reduced by 57.6 oh, times. Yeah. Right? So we always, always, and you guys got to make a note of this, please. We always take the smallest conversion factor okay because it restricts the structure the most does that make sense Yes? Good. Okay, there's a washer real quick. Yep. Okay, so what is our scale factor that we're going to use? What's our K? So our K would be 1 to 57.6. 57.6, yes. Yeah. Okay, so now we know our scale factor, right? Yeah. Next question, how much glass will the artist need to build the structure? So glass, this is going on the outside. What is on the outside? Volume or surface area? Volume. Well, our surface area because volume would be numbers. Volume would be like the inside, yeah. right? Yeah. So, she wants to put glass over each side, right? So I was asked, how much glass does she need? Well, first thing we need to do is find out what is the surface area of our original structure. And then we got to use our scale factors, okay? So, surface area for a uh, what do we call this shape? Pyramid. For a right pyramid, surface area is equal to length squared plus 2 times the length multiplied by S. This is S here. Okay? So my length is 230.4. Squared plus 2 times my length again, which is 230.4, multiplied by S, 186.4. Okay, punch that into your calculator. You'll get a surface area equaling 138,000. Can you guys see that blue all right? Yeah. 977.20. What are my units for surface area? surface area? Yeah. K squared? Uh, meter squared, right? Meters, oh. yeah. But yeah, squared. Squared is important is what I'm looking for. Okay? So we know the surface area of the original. And what are we finding? How much glass we need to build the replica? For the replica. So we need to find the surface area of the new. So it's 57.6 times less. Uh, close. So, uh, we use that number, okay? So remember, surface area new is equal to surface area of the original multiplied by what? K squared. K squared, yes. And squared, because it is surface area, that is in two dimensions, okay? 
So surface area original, that's what we just calculated, 138,977.2 uh, meters squared, multiplied by our scale factor, so 1 over 57.6 squared is equal to what? Are you okay? No. I'm sorry. One divided by fifty-seven point six bracket so squared. Think so much. Forty-one point eight nine So what? What is this what does this number tell me? So what it, was this person doing? Like they were making a replica. They are making a replica, right? Yeah. And we calculated how much surface area there was on the pyramids, right? And we just calculated how much surface area is on the replica, which he make, wants to make out of glass. So it's really four, this four, is four, eight, nine meters squared of glass. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that's how much glass she needs. That's what we... Just did. Okay. Last question. Okay. So the smaller tank in the photograph has a capacity of 1400 cubic meters. And the Larger one has a capacity of 4,725 cubic meters. During the refining process, both tanks are filled uh, from a pumping station, pumping it at the same rate. Okay, how many times longer will it take to fill the larger tank than it will <coughs> to fill the smaller tank? What should we do? We're looking for flow rates, right? And if they're being filled at the exact same rate, right? How much longer will it take to fill this one? Which one? 3.25 times longer. Oh no, that's not correct at all. You're close. Where did, where did you get the 3.25 from? Uh, well, 1400. 4725, I just put 325. 325. So you were trying. Oh, it'd be 3.025 or 0 0.325. Uh, no. Oh. But you're close. Okay, so, so what you are doing, I think, you are trying to find the number to get from the volume on the right to the volume on the left, right? Yeah, which is 325. So instead of guessing, we can calculate that, right? I'm guessing more about this thing. <laughs> And how would we calculate that? We'll just divide it. Okay, so 4,725 meters cubed divided by 1,400 meters cubed is equal to 3.375. What does this number tell me? Oh, that's, oh it's 3.375? Yep. What? Yeah, and why? Because it's 3.375 times bigger. Great, good, good. And they're being filled at the exact same rate, yeah. right? Yeah. So therefore, it takes 3.375 times longer to fill the larger tank. That one's okay? I still feel like it doesn't really make sense. Because like the tanks, like three times, 
Yeah, because like if say the tank, say the big tank was double the size, yeah. it'd be two times longer to fill. Yep. Yeah. But it's not even double the size and it's three times longer to fill. It's it's more it's it's more than triple the size, yeah. right? Fourteen hundred, twenty-eight hundred. Oh my god! I thought I thought this was forty-four hundred and four thousand seven hundred twenty-five. That's why I got that's why I got zero point three two five. This is why we use our calculator, right? Okay, so this is good. We know how much longer it will take. Now, how many times greater is the radius of the larger tank than the smaller tank? Quite a bit. Yeah. How much? I don't know. How would we find it? Probably um, by getting, taking the actual or the original, no wait, the diagram or the original. Uh, I understand what you're talking about. I do. Um, but in that case, because we don't know, we only know the area, or sorry, the volume. We only know the volume, right? We know the volume of both, right? So what is my volume? For a sphere, volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We know volume for both of them, right? So what can we do if we know V? What is the question asking us? Radius. Radius. So what are we solving for here? Radius. 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 So how are we going to get that r by itself? Ah, uh, cube root. Uh, eventually, we'll do that last okay. though, right? So first we got to multiply by 3, right? That gets rid of this. Then we're going to divide by 4, that gets rid of this. And we're going to divide by pi as well. Now we have 3v over 4 pi is equal to r cubed. Now what are we going to do, Cody? 3v is 4 pi. How do we get that? Now we're going to cube root. Now we're going to cube root it. And you go like it. Okay? So we're left with r is equal to the cube root of 3v over 4 pi. Okay, so for the larger tank, Uh, it's 3 multiplied by 4,725 divided by 4 pi. Okay, if you enter this all in one step, it's going to make your next calculation really easy. Okay, so do this in your calculator. Uh, to take the cube root, you've got to go into the math feature. There's a math and there's a cube root button in there. Okay. So, punch those into your calculator and you'll get a radius of 10.4 meters for that one. Now, for the second one, we're just going to use this formula still, right? And we're just going to use the volume of the bigger one, or of the smaller one this time. So, cube root, 3 times the volume, which is 1400, divided by 4 pi. Do that, you get a radius of 6.94 meters. What is my last step? Uh, you have to, uh, you have to go 10.4 minus 6.94. Nope, close, not minus. We wanna find how many times bigger, times, oh, times, divide. divide, yes. And it's gonna be, I'm gonna go with, Zero. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with one point six two. Mm, close. One point five. One point five times bigger. So radius is one point five times bigger. Wait, it was one point five on the dot. Yep. One point five times bigger in the bigger tank. Okay. So for some of these, like you don't even need to find the scale factor, right? And there's going to be a couple ways to solve them too, which is totally fine. Um, but is what you guys need 
to do if you're gonna like always show all of your work, right? The more work you show, the better. Well, yeah, the better, and the more opportunity you guys have for marks, right? If you just give me a wrong answer, that's zero out of three or whatever it is. If you show me a little bit of part marks, so you just get one or one or two. Mm -hmm. All right, in summary. So dimensions are related by a scale factor, okay? So remember those we talked about at the beginning. Measurement new is equal to original measurement times the scale factor, right? And you can calculate the scale factor. K is equal to diagram over the actual expectations versus reality, right? Uh, area and surface area are related by scale factor squared, right? So area new is equal to area original multiplied by K squared. Volume is related by scale factor Q. So V nu is equal to original scale fact, uh, multiplied by scale factor to the three. Enlargement. What do we know about enlargements? What does the scale factor look like for things that are getting bigger? Wait, what is it for the oh, no. Okay. Enlargements. Greater than 100%? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So greater than 100%, greater than 1 as a decimal, right? Less than 100% for reduction. And it'll be like 1 to 300, right? For an enlargement. Okay. Conversely, for reductions, it is going to be less than 100%. And 300 to 1. Yeah, it's going to be less than 1 as a decimal, and it'd be like 300 to 1. That's it. That's math 20 2, fellas. Right, job. Sorry. Let's leave. We're done. It's been dropped. Did you miss the marker and paper drop? Because I did it. Nice. Okay, thank you guys for the fun semester. You know what? No, no final. Yeah, no final. We just quit. quit. <laughs> Make Brennan do the final. It's too early yeah. to quit, fellas. Make Emery do the final. Yeah. Yeah, All right.